It ain't the left side or the right side, then it must be the fifth side. It ain't the left side or the right side. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another episode of On the Fin Side. It is our annual expert mock draft. We've got a great lineup of folks here today. Those of you that are new, you can follow us out on Facebook and on Twitter at On the Fin Side. You can follow us on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, and way more places. Lots of fun out there. Without further ado, we will dive right in to the first pick, which is going to be brought to you by Pete Smith from NFL Spin Zone. This is Pete Smith from NFL Spin Zone, picking for the Cleveland Browns. With the first pick, the Cleveland Browns will take Miles Garrett, defensive end, Texas A&M. Uh, clearly the best player in the draft, all pro upside, with the potential to be a Hall of Famer of a position they desperately need to establish an attitude on that defensive line. All right, that pick from Pete, Miles Garrett, defensive end, Texas A&M. And now we will go to my very own co-host, Brian Cat Catanzaro, with the pick for the 49ers here at number two. Yeah, here at number two with Miles Garrett off the board uh, for the Browns at number one. I had to – it was a tough choice between Solomon Thomas and Jamal Adams. I went ahead with Solomon Thomas, the defensive end from Stanford, I think he'll see some looks in the 49ers scheme as well at outside linebacker. Very solid player across the board has really shot up in, in postseason. Is firmly in the top five. I think the 49ers will have a lot of defensive choices here, and they go with Solomon Thomas. No surprise there. Solomon Thomas comes off the board of the 49ers. Up next with the Bears, we've got Bob Witt joining us today. Bob, go ahead. With the third pick, the Bears select Jamal Adams, safety from LSU. He ran a 4-4-5 in his pro day. He's a good character guy. He's a great leader in college, and he fits in with the Bears because he's a great playmaker, and they definitely need playmakers in the secondary. Not a huge surprise with Jamal Adams coming off the board to the Bears. Up next, we go to Ryan Day, big cat country from SB Nation. He's going to be picking on behalf of the Jaguars in the number four spot. My name is uh, Ryan Day um, with Big Cat Country. And with the fourth overall pick, I think the Jaguars should go with Deshaun Watson, quarterback out of Clemson. I just think the Blake Bortles experiment is over. I want to rip the Bortles Band-Aid off a year early because I think with the fifth-year option coming up next offseason, I don't think we're going to stick with him. I don't think he does well enough this year to warrant sticking with him. And I'd rather not waste a year with guys like Allen Robinson, Allen Hearns, uh, Marquise Lee, I think we're going to get some offensive playmakers in the draft. I'd rather not waste their rookie seasons on us. And honestly, our defense is coming together. Our defense was not the reason we lost a bunch of games last year. I think mostly it came down to the quarterback position. And I think Deshaun Watson, he's a smart guy. He's got a good arm. Uh, He's got incredible confidence. He can read the field well. I think he's the most NFL-ready quarterback uh, in this class. And so with the Jaguars in win-now mode, uh, I want them taking Deshaun Watson, number four. Following that surprise selection of Deshaun Watson, we're going to go over to Ian Wharton, regular guest of the show here, great guy. Ian, you are up and on the clock at the number five slot with the Tennessee Titans. Hey, this is Ian Wharton, and I'm up here with the Tennessee Titans. I'm going to go ahead with the number five overall pick. I'm going to take Marshawn Lattimore, uh, cornerback from Ohio State. This guy is just a total package at the cornerback position, and really stylistically, if you go back, look at Desmond Trufant from Washington. It's really a very similar prospect, and maybe even having better better ball skills than what we saw out of Trufant at Washington and even in the NFL. Lattimore's a one-year starter, so it's a little bit concerning as far as that, but I'm willing to bank on his size, six-foot, 200-pound uh, player. He does excellent and press. Working with Greg Schiano at Ohio State was not only a great hire by the school, uh, but also it was a good hire for the players, and we saw that development. Uh, it happened very quickly for Lattimore. This was a player that went from not only winning with just athleticism, but also with great technique as well. I think he's going to enter in the NFL and be a top-tier corner pretty quickly, maybe not in the elite tier um, in the sense that, that Mar- Marcus Peters, you know, how quickly he acclimated to the NFL just because really the ball skills. And I think that he has good ball skills. He doesn't have elite ball skills. And, and that's something to, something to me that I re, really weigh heavily. But, you know, I think Tennessee, especially with releasing with uh, releasing uh, Jason McCourty, 
which was very surprising. Uh, they need to rebuild that secondary a little bit. They would definitely have a great start here with Lattimore. All right. Marshawn Lattimore comes off the board of the Titans, commonly picked to the Jets, who happen to be on the clock now at number six. And we're going to go to Jeff L.J. Lloyd, regular guest of the show. Anytime we need to know anything Jets, even though we're a Dolphins-themed show, always good to have Jeff here. Jeff, take it away. I'm Jeff Lloyd from TurnOnTheJets.com. I also host the Draft Season podcast on iTunes with my partner, Dalvin Azario. Uh, we're going to make the pick here for the Jets, the number six selection. The pick we're going to make here for the New York Jets, and look, being at number six is not the best scenario for them. Trading out is utmost, probably the first and foremost, what they need to do. If they are forced to stay at number six, you could look at a Malik Cooker or you're going to go with the selection I'm going to make, which is tight end O.J. Howard at the University of Alabama. This is filling a need for the Jets. that's basically been a need for 20 years. We have young quarterbacks on the roster that obviously need work to be you know, developed, even to be evaluated. So the best friend of a young quarterback is always a tight end. The offensive line, they do like what they have. You have seven guys on the roster, 28 years or younger. All the starting experience should provide a little bit of a foundation for a running game. A guy like O.J. Howard, obviously, his receiving is a plus. His run blocking is excellent as well. So that's going to aid to that as well. Obviously, he brings some special talents as a receiver. Obviously, Alabama did not use all of those. So you hope for an improvement in that as maybe he evolves from a 40 reception guy a year to a 60 reception guy a year. It gives me one year here with Hackenberg or with Petty here to evaluate what I have. Do I think either one of them are a long-term answer? I don't. But it's a lot easier to evaluate the offense on a whole when it's complete everywhere else, and then I can get a true grade on my quarterback. So O.J. Howard is a slam dunk selection here for the Jets. will be on the field every down, and even whatever quarterback, if it doesn't work out, and I do have to go back quarterback later on, I know I have a stable tight end. I have some young receivers. You know, I have value in my offensive line as far as the running game. So it's the easiest thing to do right here, and I'd probably ignore offense for probably until day three with my selections from this point on. Following the Jets' selection of O.J. Howard, we're going to go to Ian with probably the least surprising pick here in the draft, even though it's one that makes total sense, I'm sure. But we'll let Ian go ahead and take it away. All right, for number seven overall, I'm going to go back to Ohio State. We're going to go with Malik Hooker here. Uh, You want to talk about impact safeties. This is a defense that's going to be running a cover three scheme, just like we see at Seattle. And the number one thing that Seattle has that makes their secondary effective Yes, Richard Sherman is great, but we saw what happened when Earl Thomas left that lineup last year. That defense kind of deteriorated a little bit, and they started giving up big plays. So as as valuable as it is to have a great cornerback, and it definitely is having one of those unicorn safeties that can play single high and actually produce at the position is one of the most difficult things to find in football. He's a guy that, again, you're looking at just like Lattimore, uh, where he had one year of production, but... The production that he had, it's not like a, a few years ago we saw Gerard Holloman out of Louisville come in get a bunch of turnovers. Some of that was luck-based. Some of that was um, you know, a little bit of smoke and mirrors. That wasn't the case here with Hooker. Hooker is a wonderfully studious player. You can see that on the game tape because the way that he reads quarterbacks, he's breaking on the ball before the quarterback even knows where he's going because he's watching that body. He's watching how the plays develop. His t- sense of timing is excellent. I know there are concerns with this run defense. You're going to hear about run defense for most free safeties. It's not going to be great. By the time the ball carrier gets to that third level, 15, 20 yards downfield, quite frankly, you've already lost the play anyway. But he's a guy that gives effort on the run in the run game, and that's enough for me. He does like to lay some big hits, and, and obviously I would like to see that improve. I'd like to see him be a perfect tackler. But uh, realistically, I'm willing to, to settle on a guy that creates turnovers He's not awful in the run game, and to me that's good enough, and that's kind of what separates him from the pack, especially as we get later into the draft. Um, There are some good safeties, but Hooker definitely separates himself. All right. Following the selection of Malik Hooker for the Chargers, we're going to go to the Panthers, and Brian Catanzaro is back. Here at number eight with Carolina, I gave them Leonard Fournette, the running back out of LSU. A lot of choices there, but you take a look at the design of their offense. They like those big bodies. Cam Newton, Devin Funches, Kelvin Benjamin, Greg Olson, all massive players for their size. They're looking to pair somebody with Jonathan Stewart, who turns 30 this year. 
Fournette is good value here at number eight, at least on, on many boards, and, and he's the pick here to go with Cam Newton. This next pick for the Bengals following Cat's selection of the bruising running back, Leonard Fournette. Kind of a combo pick. Being selected in tandem somewhat by uh, Rebecca Toback and Anthony Casenza of Stincy Jungle. Let us know what you got. All right, this is Anthony Casenza, the managing editor over at Cincy Jungle and host of the Orange and Black Insider podcast. Uh, with the number nine overall pick, we have the Bengals taking Derek Barnett, the defensive end out of Tennessee. Uh, why this pick makes sense, the Bengals do have some talent already on the edge with Carlos Dunlap, Michael Johnson, and they brought in a couple of guys to be a trade and free agency this offseason. But they need some youth and athleticism at the position. I think Barnett brings it, and he uh, is, is a little bit of a different mold than those big, gigantic guys that the Bengals currently employ uh, in Dunlap and Johnson. Um, why it might not make sense, uh, there might be some other needs on offense, and some people believe that Barnett is a little bit down the pecking order in terms of edge rushers in this draft, and you do want to get maximum value especially when you're picking top nine top ten uh in the draft but i think barnett fills a need and could be a good player for the Bengals for for many years and possibly could supplant a guy like johnson as a starter very quickly up next picking on behalf of the dreaded buffalo bills we've got nick woten from batavia news daily and niagara gazette nick thanks for joining us go for it man all right, this is uh, Nick Wilton from the Batavia Daily News up outside Buffalo, New York. I'm a Bills beat reporter for Batavia and also contribute to the Niagara Gazette and Buffalo News here and there. And for the Bills this mock draft, I have them taking Mitchell Trubisky, quarterback, North Carolina. A little bit of a surprise here to some Bills fans and, and those observers of the Bills, but it seems like this is the time the Bills are going to go quarterback if someone like Trubisky falls. You've had the Bills owner, Terry Pagula, has attended a private workout for Trubisky, not quite the norm when the owner is there. Of course, the GM and everyone else is there, but the owner turns some heads. Uh, they have Tyrod Taylor locked up again for another year, but he's only under for one more year. They have that out once again, so they're going to cause a stir at the end of the year, seeing if they're going to extend Tyrod. But in regards to a lot of other needs the Bills have, the Bills did bring in several wide receivers to replace Robert Woods, a couple veteran guys. Uh, hopefully a guy like Andre Holmes or somebody can step up in that number two spot. Uh, you had Stephon Gilmore, who went to the Patriots this year. Of course, they stole another Buffalo Bill. It's got a lot of stir in Western New York again. But uh, you have Kevon Seymour, who's a six-round pick from last year. He's uh, more than capable of stepping up. I think that's the vibe I get from general manager Doug Whaley. But top of that, if they don't like Kevon Seymour, he was a six-round pick, and the Bills have quite a few picks in the second, third, fourth round. They can replace uh, his cornerback there easily. And then, of course, someone like a linebacker, you have Reggie Ragland, who's essentially going to be maybe close to a first-round pick. He was a high second-round pick last year. They traded up to get him. They need a linebacker, and he can be your guy there. So they've kind of have a couple pieces here and there that can slide in to fill those other holes, and I think this is the time where they're going to go quarterback and the front office is going to buy themselves maybe a little bit of time to groom Trubisky to hopefully be that next guy that can uh, take his best swing at ending this now 17-year playoff drought. So just to recap really quickly here, at number one, the Browns took Miles Garrett. The 49ers took Solomon Thomas. At number three, the Bears took Jamal Adams. At number four, we had Deshaun Watson, the first quarterback, come off the board. Number five, we had corner Marshawn Lattimore going to the Titans. The Jets went ahead and took O.J. Howard, the tight end. Following them, the the L.A. Chargers went ahead and took Malik Hooker. The Panthers went ahead and took Leonard Fournette. Derek Barnett came off the board for the Bengals. And then our second quarterback of the draft came off the board to the Bills in Mitch Trubisky. And now we are up to the New Orleans Saints and Mr. Rob Prophet, who we haven't heard from yet this draft season, and we're glad to have on the show. Rob, you are up. This is Rob Prophet picking on behalf of the Saints. With pick number 11, the New Orleans Saints select Taco Charlton, defensive end out of Michigan. The Saints need a edge rusher, somebody to set the edge. Uh, Taco Charlton is a big, uh, big defensive end who can get after the quarterback, uses his hands real well. Sets the edge. He does have some inconsistency on his film, but he makes perfect sense for the New Orleans Saints at pick number 11. All right. Following Taco Charlton, we're going to go to the Browns. Will they take a quarterback? Will they not? I'm going to go right back to Mr. Pete Smith from NFL Spin Zone. Pete, you're on the clock. 
This is Pete Smith, uh, NFL Spin Zone, picking for the Cleveland Browns, 12th pick. Uh, they'll take Patrick Mahomes, quarterback, Texas Tech. Uh, none of the quarterbacks in this class are, are ready to start from day one, and everybody really needs to sit uh, their rookie season. So Patrick Mahomes has more ability than anyone else in this class. Big arm, uh, accurate, and athletic. So putting all those tools together, if he if he can be uh, coached up the right way, he can be as good as anyone in this class. Back to my co-host, Brian Cat Catanzaro, and the number 13 pick with the Cardinals. Cat, you're up. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed that Pat Mahomes went one pick ahead. That That was the one I was slated for at number 13. He's off the board, so they're, I'm going to give them the top-rated receiver, That's Mike Williams out of Clemson. This isn't really to replace Larry Fitzgerald, who's entering his 15th year. This is really to replace Michael Floyd, who was a disaster on and off the field last year. But he gets right in there at 6'3", 220 pounds, ran a 4'5". I think he gives Carson Palmer a very good weapon at the late stages of his career. All right. Our next pick is going to be announced by Tommy Lawler of Eagles Blitz. He's going to come in make the pick for the – Philadelphia Eagles here at number 14. Tommy, let's see what you got to say here, bud. This is Tommy Lawler from EaglesBlitz.com. With the 14th pick in the NFL draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Jonathan Allen, defensive tackle from Alabama. Allen is 6'3", 286 pounds. He's a top five talent, having racked up 22 sacks over the last two years. But some shoulder concerns are going to drop him a little bit in the draft. At pick 14, he's just too good a value not to roll the dice on. And defensive coordinator Jim Schwartz covets defensive linemen who can get to the quarterback. Allen can do that and would be a great pick for the Eagles. Surprisingly available at number 14, Jonathan Allen did come off the board here. And now we are going to go back over to Rob Prophet, who's going to be picking at 15 on behalf of the Indianapolis Colts. This is Rob Prophet picking on behalf of the Indianapolis Colts. With pick 15, the Indianapolis Colts select Tack McKinley, defensive end, UCLA. Tack McKinley adds a dimension to the Colts that they need on the defensive side of the ball. Everybody knows they've got some offensive firepower, but on the defensive end, they're lacking. Tack McKinley may be the best uh, edge rusher in this draft when all is said and done, but he's going to have to miss part of the season with an injured shoulder. When he comes back, he will be a force to be reckoned with as he's very quick and agile off the edge. Has some issues with his bend, but he is going to be a great player in the NFL. We're going to go to our regular Ravens correspondent here at number 16 for the Ravens pick. Guy's been all over the place from inside the NFL to numerous other other locations. I'll let him go ahead and tell you where he's from. He looks like Guy Smiley. And we are up with Alex Bente picking on behalf of the Baltimore Ravens. Hey, Alex Bente here, TV producer, formerly with Showtime Inside the NFL and NBC Sports picking number 16 for the Ravens, and with that pick, the Ravens will take Hassan Reddick, linebacker, Temple. The reason I chose uh, Reddick is because the Ravens are desperately in need of a way to bolster their pass rush. Uh, Right now, their best guy is uh, an aging 34 years old in Terrell Suggs, and Hassan Reddick's a great great pick. Strong physical guy, fast, ran a 40-yard dash at 4.52, uh, I think he can do great stuff, and with who's come off the board already, I think he's the best available player for them. A lot of people say the Ravens are going to go with a wide receiver here. Uh, a lot of people like Mike Williams. He's probably going to be gone. Corey Davis is the other name I've heard. The reason I'm taking an outside linebacker over a receiver is because, personally, I have never been thrilled with the first-round wide receiver picks that the Ravens have made. Um, I think they can find better value later on in the draft. So uh, with that pick, let's go Hassan Reddick, and I think he's going to – bolster the Ravens defense to which everyone has known and become accustomed to, especially as of late. All right. Redskins are now on the clock at pick number 17, bringing a new guest into the show, one that we're glad to have here and hopefully we'll be doing a little bit more with in the future. Mr. Ken Marangolo. Ken, take it away and tell us who the Redskins take here. I want to say thanks for having me on. I'm Ken Marangolo, managing editor of Hogs Haven, founder of First Amendment Sports, SWAG, anchor of the audible Washington Redskins podcast for First Amendment Sports. I had the, the honor of picking number 17 overall for the Washington Redskins. I raced to the podium with a card that read Christian McCaffrey running back out of Stanford. The 5'11", 200-plus pound athlete 
is a difference maker. Uh, the Redskins couldn't get off the field on third downs last season. They couldn't stop the run, so naturally I took a running back. He'll keep us on the field. He'll increase our red zone efficiency. I think he's going to line up everywhere. I think he's going to line. He'll be our starting running back. He will line up as a wide receiver. He will return kicks. I I think he 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 makes a difference uh, on the Washington Redskins. It fills a, a lot of different stat boxes. Uh, and and at the end of the day, a, a good to great running back is always always going to help your defense. And that is why number 17 overall. I'm happy that Christian McCaffrey is the latest and greatest of your Washington Redskins. Christian McCaffrey comes off the board. Number 18, the Titans are up. Let's see who Ian takes after taking Marshawn Lattimore with the Titans' first pick. Let's see where he goes with this one. All right, well, I'm back with the Titans here. We got Marshawn Lattimore at number five. Now we're going to go back outside of the hash marks with number 18. Uh, We've got to add some speed to this offensive unit. We've got a great tight end in Delaney Walker. We have some good possession receivers. Obviously, we'll, we're familiar with uh, Rashard Matthews, among some other guys. But none of these guys separate. None of these guys are able to get up on a quarter cornerback's body and create space without pushing off. We need some speed and the ability to get the fastest player in NFL combine history, a guy that shows it on tape, too. This isn't just someone uh, that ran really fast and short. He hits the field, and he looks like a 4-4 guy. That's not the case. He's a terrific route runner. Uh, John Ross out of Washington, to me, is a really good value at this point. We're going to kind of bank on the medicals a little bit. We have to be sure of the medicals. But as far as his production, this was a guy that he played defensive back. They moved him to back to receiver, had a huge year. I don't think that, that was a coincidence. I think that, so that, that, that speaks to his natural talent and the fact that he's so good off the line of scrimmage. Once he beats you off the line of scrimmage, he's gone. Uh, you're going to have to dedicate a safety to his side of the field on top of that cornerback, and now you're going to be able to take advantage of all those possession receivers from Marcus Mariota. Uh, John Ross, at this point in the draft, to me, is, is just a fantastic value. So the speedy wide receiver John Ross is off the board, and Rob Prophet is up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Go for it, Rob. With pick 19, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Dalvin Cook, running back, Florida State. Dalvin Cook is an explosive running back who had a prolific college career. He is able to take the small runs and turn them into huge home runs. Uh, He is a home run hitter without a doubt. Dalvin Cook can add a dimension to the Buccaneers offense they haven't had uh, since work done. Uh, He is an explosive running back who makes perfect sense to team up with Jameis Winston in this offense in Tampa Bay. Second running back of the draft just came off the board. Tampa Bay Buccaneers makes a lot of sense taking Dalvin Cook. Cat, you and the Broncos are officially on the clock here. Yeah, this was a tough one here at number 20 with the Broncos uh, between three offensive linemen, Garrett Bowles from Utah, Ryan Ramchick from Wisconsin, and the versatile Forrest Lamb from Western Kentucky. Went ahead and gave them Garrett Bowles' verdict. Left tackle fits their scheme a little bit better. We'll also give the Broncos the opportunity to take uh, Donald Stevenson and move him back to his natural right guard position to compete with Menelik Watson. So I, I, Garrett Bowles is the pick here for me at, at number 20. All right. We're going to go to another new guest of the show here. He's here to announce the Lions pick, Mr. Brian Sipe. Let's see who you're taking here. All right. I'm Brian Sipe. Uh, with the 21st selection, the Detroit Lions select Jared Davis, linebacker out of Florida. Um, I believe that his athleticism, uh, his versatility fits exactly what the Lions coaches like to do the most, and that's work around different positions. Linebacker is clearly their number one need up with defensive line. I think the way that this board has fell, none of those defensive linemen are there that they would want to select. So I think it's pretty obvious that they would want to go with the linebacker. <clears throat> he is clearly uh, their most most likely selection at this spot. Uh, they've had him in for multiple visits. He fits their, one of their biggest needs. Like I said, they have only one starting returner or returning linebacker from last year. Uh, to hear Whitehead is the only one. They cut DeAndre Levy, who they signed to a monster contract a few years ago. So, you know, they've, they've spent the offseason improving their offense, and uh, they've kind of ignored the defense at this point. So I think that it's pretty clear this is what they should do. I think it's pretty clear that if this is the way the board falls, this is what they're going to do. All right. The pick that a lot of our listeners are waiting for, 
Number 22, the Miami Dolphins are on the clock here. And we've got none other than Greg Likens himself joining to make the pick. Greg, thanks for joining. Let's see who the Dolphins are going to take at 22 overall. This is Greg Likens, former host of the Finsiders, current host on 790 The Ticket in Miami. And with the 22nd overall pick, the Miami Dolphins will select linebacker Reuben Foster out of Alabama. Yes, a bit of a controversial pick, but the talent is too good to pass up as I think the Alabama star inside linebacker can play multiple positions. That linebacking core can fill a huge need for the Dolphins, especially long-term as they've been starving for a linebacker for years that they can count on. Now, certainly with the diluted drug test sample from the combine we just found out about, in addition to him being kicked out of the combine and some injury concerns, there certainly are some character problems that the Dolphins are going to have to clear up. But I think this is going to be eerily reminiscent of last year with Laramie Tunzel, where they see a player who should have been, in Tunzel's case, potentially the number one overall pick, fall to 13. In Foster's case, a top 10 pick by all accounts, talent wise, fall to 22. I don't think they can pass it up. Now, don't get me wrong. I was tempted to go with a cornerback like Conley White or Humphrey who's still on the board in this draft, or even a Jabril Peppers out of Michigan. And I know some would go for Forrest Lamp, but I think the pick will be linebacker out of Alabama, Reuben Foster for the Miami Dolphins. Big thanks to Greg Likens for joining us today to make that Dolphins pick. Up next at number 23, we've got Marco from Bleed Big Blue. First time here with us. Glad to have him on. Marco, you are up. Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Marco, and I am calling in from the Bleed Big Blue podcast. Um, you can find us over at bleedbigblue.com. And given the way this board has, has dropped, I think the Giants' priority should be tight end. Now, my fellow co-host would kill me and tell me that we should go defense, but defense was not the problem. My selection for the number 23 pick would be Miami's tight end, David Njoko. He's the second best rated tight end on the board, right next to Howard. If he's there at 23, I think it is a no-brainer that you give you give Eli more weapons to complete what could possibly be his last Super Bowl run. Thank you again for uh, listening in, and uh, if you want to follow us, uh, please do so. David Njoku comes off the board to the New York Giants. Ian Wharton, you are up picking on behalf of the Raiders here at 24. Okay, so we're on the board here with Oakland, and obviously, uh, you know, when I made this pick, it was right before the, the Gary and Conley news kind of broke that he may be involved in a rape allegation. You know, obviously we're hoping that not only for the victim but also for Conley uh, that that situation plays itself out in a favorable manner. Uh, but I'm going to go with Conley here, like I said, because I made this pick prior to, to knowing that. But, yeah, this is a pick where you're looking at just a terrific value as far as what he brings on the field. He is an extremely refined cornerback. He has two years of experience at Ohio State. Even when he played last year in 2016, I'm sorry, in 2015 with Eli Apple. Eli Apple went 10th overall. Gary Conley was a better cornerback than, than Eli Apple was. And so if you're confident as far as, his ability to to get on the field right away, um, I certainly am, and I think that the, the teams in the back end of the first round, if they have a crack at at Conley, they should as well. He can play inside, he can play outside. He's not the fastest guy on the field, and I would like him to be a little bit smoother in his transitions. Uh, but I think that if you're looking at looking for a, a high end number two corner, so a guy that may not be that elite potential because of the athleticism. And again, it's not, it's not that he's a bad athlete. It's just that he's not a, a top tier athlete. So I do worry a little bit when you look at guys um, like Des Bryant facing guys like that. And you're going to worry about most cornerbacks in those situations. But Conley's a guy, I am very confident with his ability to match up with most corners or with most receivers and comparatively against corners. Um, he's a more physical player. He's a more polished player. He's going to be able to impact that team right away. Um, especially a team that has some aging, some guys back there in that secondary, Reggie Nelson and Sean Smith, those guys aren't getting younger. They need to add some speed and versatility to that unit. Yeah, just to explain for everybody here, we did make our selections in advance just to make the picks run smoother on the show. The allegations against Gary and Conley came up while we were in the process of recording. So, unfortunately, 
you know, this was a pick that was made before that happened. Lots of credit to Ian. This may be something that, that does clear up between now and the draft itself. We don't know, but we did figure we'd honor the selection that Ian made. So, Ian, I appreciate you doing that there, man. All right. Following Ian, Mr. Rob Prophet, you are on the clock with the Texans. Which way are you going with this pick? With pick 25, the Houston Texans select Deshaun Kaiser, quarterback, Notre Dame. Deshaun Kaiser is a big physical quarterback who can stand tall in the pocket and makes perfect sense for the Texans as far as the need goes. The Texans missed on Brock Osweiler last year, and uh, they have a huge need, and Deshaun Kaiser can fill that role. Now, he's going to be a guy that needs to, needs to sit for a year or so, but once he develops under Bill O'Brien, uh, he can be a great quarterback in the NFL. Another quarterback off the board. There is a huge run on quarter, quarterbacks going in this first round. And now we are up to Brian Cat Catanzaro and the Seattle Seahawks. 26, uh, you look at, at the Seahawks' previous first-round picks, they tend to go with the bad boy a little bit more. Uh, Bruce Irvin, Frank Clark. I see them taking Malik McDowell here. Uh, you know, he's somebody who physically really has to be coached up, kept under control. Pete Carroll tends to like those types of players. They have a big gaping hole there at defensive tackle as well. If Pete Carroll gets – Get some uh, McDowell headed in the right direction. I, I think this could be a star in the making. The troubled defensive tackle, Malik McDowell, is off the board here. Ian, you are up with the Chiefs. Where are you going with these guys? Okay, I went back here for the Kansas City Chiefs, back to Ohio State. It's kind of ridiculous how I keep getting these Ohio State guys, but that's just what I like the value here for on the board. Um, Kansas City, if I could have gotten a quarterback, I would have loved one. That would have been my number one priority. Uh, This is a loaded team, though. They don't really need any help on offense outside of quarterback. On defense, I think their secondary is is fairly set. Uh, They've got enough young guys back there. I think that they could actually sit tight and kind of see how the development works for those guys. They can kind of just kind of attack their biggest need, and then then you would just boil it down to either edge rusher, inside linebacker, or defensive end. Uh, with Jay Howard being released, they lost on Terry Poe. So that is a position that they could use. It's just not a great class, and obviously the board didn't fall a great way for me to take that. I'm going to go with the immediate need and the most pressing need. We know Derek Johnson. He's had all the injury issues. He's approximately 70 years old now. Um, so we're going to have to find a replacement for him, and, and Romick Wilson has not been that guy. So I'm going to go with Raquan McMillan. This guy, he's he's a little bit limited athletically. He's not super fluid. Um, but he can play in man coverage. He can definitely play in zone coverage. I really like his ability to play hash mark to hash mark on the college game, which is going to be thinner in the NFL. It's about numbers to numbers in the NFL. He's not quite sideline to sideline speed. He has to read the play correctly first, and he does at a high clip. Um, but he's a very good coaches player. He's going to be a guy that is going to be a defensive captain in the NFL eventually. And uh, I just think that this is going to be a pick that, it's a, a meat and potatoes type of pick for the Kansas City Chiefs, and they've usually hit home runs on those types of picks. All right. One of the one of those surprise picks that snuck his way into the first round. Raquan McMillan comes off the board, and Rob Prophet, you are on the clock with the Dallas Cowboys. With pick 28, the Dallas Cowboys select Adoree Jackson, cornerback, Southern Cal. Adoree Jackson is an explosive cornerback who can make plays all over the field from from the secondary, but also in the return game. He makes perfect sense for the Dallas Cowboys at this at this pick. Uh, they have a huge need on the on the defensive side of the ball, uh, specifically in the secondary, where Adoree can come in and make plays and uh, get early playing time, but also again uh, make plays in the return game. Rob took the love or hate him, Adoree Jackson. Good pick there for the Cowboys. They do need to help out there in the secondary. Kat, you are on the clock with the Green Bay Packers. So with a lot of pass rushes going off the board, uh, we still have one left. I'm a little surprised he's still still here, and that's uh, T.J. Watt uh, out of out of Wisconsin. J.J. J.J. Watt's little brother. You know, he does kind of remind remind me of Clay Matthews a little bit. A little bit sturdier, and maybe not quite as athletic, but he really does help replace uh, Julius Peppers at that outside linebacker spot. Now they've got Nick Perry, Clay Matthews, and T.J. Watt coming off the edge. J.J. Watt's little brother makes his way up to Lambeau Field, and while he does, Ian Wharton, you are back on the clock making a selection here on behalf of the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
So the Pittsburgh Steelers, we're looking at them. They have 39-year-old James Harrison as their leading edge rusher. Uh, 2015 first-round pick Bud Dupree really didn't do much in his first year in about three quarters up until the last couple games of 2016 and then in the 2017 playoffs. We saw a little bit more from him. He's just a raw athlete still. He has no idea how to use his hands. Um, you're looking at consistency there being an issue, and because of that, I'm looking at the way the, bo- the board fell, and I really like Auburn edge rusher uh, Carl Lawson. To me, he's a guy, he had some injury his- issues early in his career, and that kind of stunted his production. His senior season, he comes back, just has a great year. And, and just as far as impacting the game, being a well-rounded player, he's good against the run. He's a good pass rusher. He's not a great athlete, not a top-tier athlete. Um, he's not a top-tier uh, really impact or production guy, but you look at a solid player with enough of the uh, the athleticism that you want to see to say, this is going to be a guy that's going to crack that rotation early. You could argue that I think he would actually start right away over Bud Dupree uh, in that lineup, and therefore that gives them three guys that they can kind of rotate. They need that because that secondary doesn't really produce turnovers, and so for them to get to that level, they're going to have to increase that pass rush productivity and Carl Lawson, to me, is the best guy on the board to do that. All right. Two picks left to go in the draft. Let's see where we go with these. Kat, you are back on the clock. You've got the Falcons. Who are you taking here? When you look at the Falcons, not a lot of needs on their team right now, and I think they have the ability here to take kind of a luxury pick. That's why I went with Evan Ingram, the tight end out of Ole Miss. 6'3", 242 pounds, really has been seen – in postseason workouts as that movable chess piece. Some even think he can move outside to play receiver. But, you know, it's been since Tony Gonzalez, since the Falcons have had that seam threat. So Ingram, I think, is a nice luxury pick here for a Falcons team that really is in position to win now. We came very, very close to winning the Super Bowl last year and should have. All right. And with the final pick of the first round, both Cat and myself, I will tell you, we had two different guys that we targeted for the Dolphins. Neither one of them is off the board yet. So let's see if either of them comes off. Rob, you are up with the final pick and your second pick for the Saints. After you went ahead and picked Taco Charlton, the defensive end before, let's see if you're going to bolster that defense a little more, bolster that offense, or where you're going here. With pick number 32, the New Orleans Saints select Obi Melanfonwu out of UConn, safety. Obi is a huge safety, uh, stands about six foot four, plays very physical, and obviously was the darling of the combine, where he exploded with huge explosion tests, a big vertical, he's fast, he's got range, he can tackle, he makes perfect sense for the Saints at this spot. He's probably a guy who could have went a lot higher, but slipped in this mock, and uh, it's a home run hit for the New Orleans Saints at pick 32, where he can come in and make huge plays and be a, and be a big-time playmaker for the New Orleans Saints. Obi Melifonwu is the final selection of the first round of our On the Fin Side Experts mock. Thank you, everybody, very much for joining us here today. Make sure you follow us out on Spreaker, YouTube, Stitcher, iTunes, and more. Also, you can catch us out on Facebook and on the Fin Side. Make sure you follow all our wonderful guests who join us today. Big thank you to all of you. And if it's not on the right side, if it's not on the left side, it's on the fin side. Solo D, take us home. It ain't the left side or the right side. Then it must be the fin side. Fin side. It ain't the left side, left side or the right, right side. side. Then it must be uh, the fin side. Left. Listen, uh, Dolphins fin